This video is brought to you by Ground News. Today, the world reacts to anti-Semitic protests in Dagestan, the UK's COVID inquiry continues, and Mike Pence drops out of the presidential race. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 30th of October 2023. On Sunday, it was reported that a group of anti-Israel protesters arrived at an airport in the Russian region of Dagestan and broke through security barriers. Dagestan is a mainly Muslim republic in the North Caucasus and is one of the poorest regions of Russia. To a large degree, the Russian government has, at times, struggled to control Dagestan, with the Kremlin unable to push through conscription to the area. The group on Sunday was protesting the arrival of a flight from Israel and had been planned on Telegram, with some of the organisers encouraging people to search for every Jewish person they could. Russia's interior ministry said of the incident that more than 150 active participants in the unrest have been identified. 60 of them have been arrested. Video footage of the incident shows people holding anti-Semitic banners, while others chanted Allo Akbar, which translates to God is greatest. There were even some reports of members of the group stopping cars as they were leaving the airport and asking to see documentation. This incident has caused international backlash, most notably from Israel, who have urged Russia to protect all its citizens and all Jews. The Israeli Prime Minister's office added that Russia must act decisively against incitement to violence. The US has also gotten involved, with a US presidential spokesperson saying in a tweet that the United States vigorously condemns the anti-Semitic protests in Dagestan. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. This week is shaping up to be particularly dramatic, as the UK's COVID inquiry is hearing evidence from a number of influential aides from the Boris Johnson era. The two specific topics that could end up being damaging for those involved at the time, including current Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, are the speed at which the government first responded to the coronavirus pandemic and any revelations about government parties during the lockdowns. In fact, there's already been some pretty damaging news for the Prime Minister already. It was reported that the current Chief Scientific Officer, Dame Angela McLean, referred to Rishi Sunak as Dr. Death because of the impact of his Eat Out to Help Out scheme. It's also possible that some WhatsApp messages between government advisers could be read out at the inquiry, with George Osborne, the former Chancellor, claiming that he'd been told that some of these messages between Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings used really pretty disgusting language and misogynistic language. We'll update you on any of the big revelations from the inquiry as it happens. Preliminary conclusions from Paraguay's 2022 census had suggested that over a million people in Paraguay have seemingly disappeared. Back in 2012, Paraguay's census put the population at nearly 6.5 million people. Given its status as a fast-growing emerging economy, Paraguay's National Institute of Statistics forecast that, by 2022, Paraguay's population would number just shy of 7.5 million. In reality, Paraguay's latest census points towards a population of 6.1 million inhabitants, a humongous shortfall given the numbers. So where are the missing 1.35 million people? Well, it's complicated. On one hand, a significant number of Paraguayans emigrated to the likes of Spain and Argentina for employment. On the other, the number of children people are having in Paraguay has fallen hard in recent years. Then comes the issue of politics. Not only was the projection incorrect, the 2012 figure was wrong too. Due to political turmoil at the time, not everyone could be surveyed, ultimately meaning that the 2012 figure was, to be blunt, a bit of a guess. Data from Germany's Federal Statistics Office found that German GDP fell by 0.1% in the third quarter of 2023, with a decline driven by a dip in household consumption. This is just the latest in a slew of bad headlines for the German economy, which has struggled to regain momentum since Putin's invasion of Ukraine and its accompanying impact on both European energy prices and the wider European economy. Germany's economy has been having such a tough time that The Economist declared it the sick man of Europe earlier this year, and the ruling coalition has seen its approval ratings drop to impressive lows. 
In many ways, Germany is facing the same challenges as its European peers, including an ageing society and a slowdown in productivity. But the German economy is having a particularly tough time because of its historic reliance on exports. Germany is one of the world's biggest exporters, but the rise of protectionism in the US via the Inflation Reduction Act and subsidised Chinese exports, including Chinese EVs, has put this growth model under strain. Moving to the US now, where on Sunday afternoon, former Vice President Mike Pence withdrew from the 2024 presidential race, saying that this is not my time. He added in a statement that we always knew it would be an uphill battle, but I have no regrets. To an extent, this is unsurprising. Pence was not polling well and his campaign had run into financial troubles. At the end of September, Pence owed about $621,000 and his campaign had only $1.2 million in the bank, far less than the other candidates. Pence had also already isolated himself from the Trump-supporting faction of the Republican Party when he certified the 2020 election results. Following the 2020 election, former President Donald Trump claimed that the election was stolen from him. Pence has doubled down on his actions on January the 6th, saying that he's proud of what he did and that there is almost no idea more un-American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. Mr Pence has not yet endorsed any other candidates, instead saying that he wants Americans to choose a leader that will appeal to the better angels of our nature, and not only lead us to victory, but also lead our nation with civility and back to these time-honoured principles that have always made America strong, prosperous and free. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss some more positive environmental news. Ember Climate, an environmental non-profit think tank, recently claimed that half of the world economies are already past their peak fossil power. In total, 107 global economies are already at least five years past a peak in their electricity generation from fossil fuels. In yet more good news, they found that 78 of these so-called post-peak economies have displaced fossil energy with clean energy. This is all possible thanks to our sponsor, Ground News, a website and app designed to help you take the power of the media into your own hands. Here's how it works. Every day, Ground News ingests over 50,000 articles from all over the world. They then organise these articles by story. For each and every story, you can see the number of reporting sources, where these sources lean on the political spectrum at an individual level and group level, compare the headlines of each source, and read each article all without ever leaving the app. But my favourite part has to be their new comparison feature, which highlights specific differences in left-leaning and right-leaning reporting. Ground News is such a useful tool for our current media landscape, and I think an app like this will only become more essential as the media landscape continues to evolve. Our team at TLDR likes Ground News so much that we've decided to offer 30% off the Ground News Vantage plan to all our viewers. That's under $6 a month for unlimited access to every incredible Ground News feature. This offer is only available here, so make sure you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.